Thursday, January 19th, 2023, Maneco 64, home of alternative economics and contrarian views. Today, we're going to look at the, the real money system uh, that there is uh, out there that the authorities don't want you to know. Before we start, though, we're going to look at some uh, some headlines, some, some economic data that came out yesterday and what that is pointing to. Uh, yeah, in particular in the U.S., in the U.K., of course, the economy is not doing great. We, we've got a lot of strikes and uh, we've got uh, prices rising at still over 13 percent as per the retail price index. But in the U.S., it's the same thing. Yes, we've seen uh, the CPI uh, tick lower, also the PPI, but, but that's just temporary because things are going to pick up again. Most people really think that the CPI is inflation, but inflation, of course, as we know, is the creation of uh, currency and credit out of thin air. And we've actually ha have had deflation for almost a year as the M2 has shrunk. So what we're seeing really with the CPI is rising prices. That's what I wanted to say. But we saw yesterday, and I thought this is very interesting here, uh, again, Tavi Costa, he noted that uh, retail sales that came out in the United States, uh, this is what he said. We just saw one of the worst two-month declines in retail sales since global, the global financial crisis and the COVID lockdowns. The squeeze on consumers is real and markets are starting to treat bad news as bad news. So there you go. There's a chart. So what, what does he mean by market treating bad news as bad news? Well, we had the uh, stock markets drop quite sharply yesterday, uh, despite those weak data. In the past, <laughs> many years ago, uh, when you had bad data, stock markets rebounded because they thought the Fed would stay accommodative, but the Fed is not showing any signs of that. And the other thing, uh, the bond market, which I still think is not out of the woods, but it looks like uh, bond investors think that the Fed is going to have to to halt raising rates very quickly. And I think they're forecasting already rates down to back down to 3% by next year. And as you can see here yesterday, we saw the whole U.S. Treasury yield curve drop quite sharply in terms of yields. That is, prices rose. So back to... Uh, this real money system and here I'm going to talk about the UK because that's where I am and uh, I have been buying gold since 2002 and uh, once you buy gold you start looking into gold into the uh, monetary system at least I did uh, my curiosity <laughs> made me look at it the only thing really I knew about gold, let's say when I was at university doing economics and international relations, professors always said, well, yeah, in 1971, uh, Nixon closed the gold window. And they stopped at that. We, we Economics uh, nowadays, they never look at what the monetary system was and that, what it meant to have gold. But uh, over the years, uh, I kept researching and uh, I'm coming to a few con conclusions, and uh, today we're going to talk about why I, I keep uh, trying to, to buy gold, because it's getting harder and harder, because uh, the pound, uh, which I'm going to be calling the irredeemable pound, is becoming worth less and less. You can get, and you're going to see uh, what is happening to the pound, and uh, so, yeah, I said there is a real money system out there and, and that the powers that be uh, don't want you to know about it. And that's true because physical gold and physical silver are not considered uh, financial instruments. They're not regulated by the FCA. And uh, no financial advisor there that is regulated or registered with the FCA, which I used to be when I, I worked in the city, is going to tell you to buy physical gold and silver because it's not part of his his or her remit. So you'll never hear this from, from anyone uh, that is a financial advisor. Am I trying to give you advice? 
Definitely not. I'm only giving you my opinion and it's up to you to decide uh, what you think and maybe even uh, do your own research and due diligence. So why do I say it's uh, the real money system that they don't want you to know? Well, it's very simple. Uh, you just have to look at uh, what uh, the sovereign, the gold sovereign is. And you can do that with the Britannia, but the sovereign has been uh, a pound since 1817 and it hasn't changed. You might think, well, yeah, we went off the gold standard. Yes, we did in 1931 in the UK. And we adopted the irredeemable pound. Uh, what does it mean, irredeemable? Well, it means that you can't uh, get a sovereign for your pound note or your pound coin, your uh, copper nickel pound coin, that is. So let's uh, go and look at Wikipedia. And I know many of you think Wikipedia is not credible, but there are some things <laughs> that uh, they can't really change because it's the law. So we'll go uh, and look at the sovereign and see what they say here. The sovereign is a British gold coin with a nominal value of one pound sterling, yes, and contains 0 0.2354 troy ounces of pure gold. So why troy ounce? Well, because that's uh, how gold is measured in troy ounces. And it's very important that you uh, distinguish between the troy ounce and the normal ounce because um, one troy ounce is 31.1035 grams and one I think it's an imperial ounce is 28 grams so it makes a big difference struck since 1817 it was originally a circulating coin that was accepted in Britain and elsewhere in the world. It is now a bullion coin and is sometimes mounted in jewelry. Uh, in addition, circulation strikes and proof examples are often collected for their numismatic value. In most recent years, it has become the design, uh, born the design of St. George and the Dragon. In the reverse, the initials BP, uh, of the designer Benedetto Pistrucci uh, are visible on the right of the date. Yeah, he was an Italian uh, artist that was chosen, sculptor, I think, back in 1817, just before there, to design the sovereign, Benedetto Pistrucci. There are some other sovereigns that have the shield back, not designed by him. But um, yes, it's still a pound. They say it's a bullion coin, uh, but really, uh, technically, it isn't. It's still circulating coin, even though it doesn't circulate anymore. And another important part about the sovereign. As a legal tender coin, the sovereign is exempt from capital gains tax for UK residents. So that's the kicker. So is the Britannia and all the other gold uh, coins like uh, the half Britannia or the, the half sovereign, the quarter sovereign that they uh, make now. They're all legal tender coins exempt from capital gains tax. And I, I'll give you an example of why they don't want you to anecdotal evidence that they don't want you to know about this. I remember back in 2009, I was still working in the city at MF Global and I had a very good friend there that a uh, few years prior I had gotten him involved in gold and he became also a proponent of sound money and, and uh, he signed up for a, a gold conference at the uh, an FT gold conference. I think it was around 2009. So I went with my friend and there at the time I think as well. Uh, they were trying to push GLD, which is an ETF for gold. So we were there and uh, there are a lot of people from the bullion banks, uh, all the usual suspects uh, from investment firms, and, and they were trying to push the GLD. They're saying that gold is going to become more and more important. And then uh, they had a question and answer uh, part, and I raised <laughs> my hand and I got up and asked the question, uh, what about 
gold sovereigns. You know, they're, they're uh, capital gains uh, tax free and, and they're legal tender. Uh, don't you recommend that? And they basically almost shot me up and told me to sit down and said, well, we're not looking at, at taxes here and we're not looking at sovereigns. Uh, we're not financial advisors. And you don't have to be a financial advisor to know that uh, gold sovereigns or coins of the realm don't incur capital gains tax. So uh, they were really like uh, looking at me. What are you talking about? Sit down. We want to look at the paper financial gold. So uh, that just goes to show you they don't want you to know the truth uh, about the real money system that they still have. And it's been around for over, well, 200 years now. Yes, there, there were some periods uh, back in the uh, 1970s, late 60s, early 70s, where they put limits on, on how many uh, of these you could get but uh, nothing changed legally, I would say. So now we're gonna look at the difference between the real money system and the system that we're forced to use. It's almost like uh, in the health sector, uh, they tell you to take so-and-so, these things that are produced artificially, but they never tell you about a healthy diet, exercise, basically your natural immune system. And I would say it's the same thing for in the money sphere. They never tell you about sound money and that you could actually save in sound money. And it's not even a financial, uh, financial instrument because it's not regulated. So let's look at it. Uh, the rapidly dwindling value of the irredeemable pound. And I had to call it irredeemable because it's not really a pound. <laughs> the, the, the money that we use or the currency that we use is an imposter really to the real pound. So, for example, the gold pound of 1910 uh, or sovereign or even 1817 was equal to 7.32184663 grams of gold. Uh, the whole coin itself is about 7.99 grams, just underneath that. Why do I use all the decimal points? Well, because you need to be exact. It makes a difference. Uh, and then we go to 1931 on September 31st. Britain adopts irredeemable pound and abandons the, the real pound or the abandons the gold standard. And uh, the re irredeemable pound promptly drops by 30% versus uh, the dollar or, or gold, because the, uh, the dollar was as good as gold back then. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, one troy ounce of gold was $20.67. And then we come to the second big event uh, here, uh, is Bretton Woods Agreement of 1944 makes the US dollar redeemable for, for uh, foreign treasuries at $35 per troy ounce of gold and fixes foreign currencies to the US dollar. So the British pound or the irredeemable pound became indirectly linked uh, to gold through the dollar. But it didn't mean to say that the UK or the UK treasury could devalue the, uh, the pound, irredeemable pound versus dollar and indirectly versus gold. Because uh, as you can see here, uh, in 1949, the UK devalued the irredeemable pound by 30 and a half percent to the dollar from 404 to 280. And then in 1967, it did it again by 14 percent this time from 280 to 240. And then we come to August 15th, 1971, when uh, the dollar became the irredeemable dollar because pre President Nixon default, default, defaulted, sorry, temporarily, as he said back then, on uh, the promise to pay one troy ounce of gold for $35 to two other countries, right? And uh, since then, <laughs> in my opinion, we've had monetary chaos and that's why we have these huge financial crises maybe every 10 years or so. Now it's getting shorter. Of course, 
So let's look at what happened, what had happened to the uh, irredeemable pound uh, or what has happened since 1971. Well, back in 71, uh, one irredeemable pound bought 1.7503376 grams of gold or one troy ounce of gold uh, was worth 17 pounds. 77 or irredeemable pounds because we know uh, basically uh, the gold pound is the sovereign it's uh, the 7.32 uh, grams right uh, and then we come to uh, another event that I think was quite significant and that was May 7th 1999 that's when Gordon Brown pre-announced the sale sales <laughs> uh, of half of Britain's gold reserves Back then, the re irredeemable pound only bought 0 0.179789 grams of gold uh, or one troy ounce equaled uh, 173 irredeemable pounds. <laughs> Don't you wish you had bought some of that gold that Gordon Brown sold? <laughs> 173 per troy ounce. And now we jump to more recently and this is uh, taken from January 16th 2023 so this is how much the irredeemable pound now buys <laughs> in terms of gram and it's 0 0.019803 uh, grams which is basically 19.8 milligrams that the pound buys so uh, but the 2022 uh, gold pound or sovereign or even if you have a 20 23 sovereign is still equal 7.3218466 grams of gold. For me, <laughs> the lesson learned is uh, adopt a gold standard for you and your family if possible. Of course, it's hard. It's getting harder and harder. My other conclusion is that the irredeemable pound is going to become worth less and less and you're going to be, be buying a, a lot fewer milligrams uh in the future <laughs> it's only going to get worse and of course many of you have asked me in the past where uh, where to get gold or even silver silver is in the same boat as gold i would say well i've uh, partnered with gold investments here in the uk for about five years uh, when i first bought gold i, I bought it from them um, They've been in business for 41 years. The details are below in the description. You can use my promo code, Maneco64. For my US and North American viewers, uh, I've recently partnered with ITM Trading and uh, Miles Franklin. So you can look at all the details there as well below in the description of the video. So now uh, let's look at where the markets are this morning. So it's uh, 8.41 a.m. London time. Uh, we've got spot gold at 19.13. It's up about $9. High's been 17. The low's been about 19.01. Silver's up slightly. It's up 5 cents at 23.50. High's been 60, low 20, 23.23. I said yesterday that silver's still not really under pressure it's just like fluctuating uh either side of 24 and, and i think that will continue uh in the short term but i i still think it's uh quite positive that silver hasn't really dropped uh, much further i think uh gold still looks very good still holding on there despite uh stock market having dropped there quite a bit i, I think uh the powers that be are trying to make People go into uh, treasuries because treasuries did well, bonds did well. So maybe that's taking a little bit away from the precious metals. But I think some people will realize that that's the place to be. Uh, what about the stock market? Yeah, it's continuing lower here. The Dow futures is down 90 points. NASDAQ 100 futures down 15 and the S&P futures down about 7 to the currencies, uh, sterling is unchanged, 123.45. Sterling rallied quite quite a bit yesterday. Does that mean that uh, the uh, sterling weakness uh, is finished? 
No, especially not against gold and even against dollar. The dollar, I would say, these currencies take turn to devalue against each other. Uh, the euro, uh, on the other hand, is a, a little higher this morning. It's up a quarter of a percent at 108.22. The dollar has dropped back versus uh, the yen here. So the, the yen weakened quite a bit yesterday. I think it went above 132. And now we're testing 128. Dollars down two thirds of a percent. Uh, as for the JGB uh, 10 year yield, well, uh, the market's still uh, kind of uh, trusting the yield curve control for now. They haven't really uh, gone for the 50 basis point target. The highest we've had today in the 10 year JGB is around 43 basis points. But I don't think, uh, as I've said, uh, as I said yesterday, I don't think that's going to last that long. Um, a dollar's up slightly versus the U1, 677.80. Let's have a look at the uh, what's going on uh, with the ruble. Uh, dollar is uh, up about a quarter of a percent, just below 69 versus the ruble. To the other currencies. Uh, the Aussie dollar is down two thirds of a percent, 68.95. Uh, the dollar is unchanged versus the Canadian dollar, one just around 135. And the Kiwi dollar is down two thirds as well, 63.94. And talking about New Zealand or the Kiwi dollar, I saw that uh, the Prime Minister Ardern has resigned or will not run in the next election. It's ironic because Many of these people who are biting the dust, like Liz Truss uh, and many others, uh, they were saying about a year ago that Putin was going to be gone soon. And they're all falling, uh, you know, uh, killing over and uh, biting the dust. <laughs> Interesting, I thought. And uh, Ardern was uh, very unpopular. She, she was kind of uh, like a dictator doing, you know, what happened in 20 from 2020 to 2021 22 back to the markets uh platinum is up uh, about three bucks it's trading about a thousand forty five uh wti crude that's down 1.3 at 78.80 and uh brent crude is down one percent at 84.30 high grade copper is down half a percent at 421.40 and we'll finish off, uh, look at the uh, U.S. Treasuries. Yeah, the 10-year yield is down further this morning. It's down uh, another three basis points, 334. And uh, yeah, it looks like uh, the curve is still very steep. We got the two-year at 404 and the 10 year at 334. So that's definitely pointing to a recession. And we saw the retail sales number is also not just pointing to a recession, but maybe uh, some kind of financial crisis or some kind of event uh, in the markets. So uh, with that, I'm going to wish you all a great day. Take care. Bye.